All right, so here we are on problem 15, and this is, um, we're going to practice the idea of gravitational potential. In, in other words, we're going to equate, um, oh, you're getting all my email messages. I should probably turn off my email. Um, but anyway, um, the uh, we're going to equate the gravitational potential energy to the kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy. So what is the gravitational potential energy of a baseball that is thrown from a height of 1.5 meters to a height of 14.5 uh, 14 meters, okay? Um, so, it starts at 1.5, and we throw it to one to 14, so, so let's just take, and then um, we're just gonna, it's changing po gravitational pot potential energy, and we're gonna say it comes to a stop at that maximum height, okay, at that height, okay? And then we're gonna set that in 16, I throw, oh, well, we're just, we're just going to look at this change in gravitational potential energy, okay? So all we're doing is taking the MGH and getting the, the change in um, I, that stupid email thing flashes and, and I'm like dug and up, squirrel, stare at it, and I lose my train of thought. Let me turn that sucker off. It's driving me crazy. Probably won't turn off now. There it goes. Okay, good. So, here we go. So, on problem 15, it's not that hard, okay? Because this equation is not... I, I, I should stop saying it. MGH. You know, to, to a person who's been doing this stuff for decades, it's like in, in my entire high school and college career, graduate school, all that kind of stuff where you just work with equations all the time, except that my PhD was actually in um, curriculum and instruction and math and physics and math education type stuff. Um, but still, <laughs> physics and math education, lots of equations. All right. So mass times gravity times the change in height. Okay. So I'm going to write it better because the, the delta, the change in height. And I think our change in height for this one was 13 meters. Our gravity is always 9 point, is we're doing problems here on Earth, 9.8 meters per second squared. In my Physics 210 class, we have fun with, okay, if you threw the same baseball with the same speed, how high would it go on the moon, where this is only 1.6? It goes pretty high. Because gravity's not pulling, the, the acceleration due to gravity is not near as strong. It's only 1.6 meters per second squared. So then we get the mass is equal to 0.145 kilograms, okay? So just multiply those three numbers together, and you're, you're done, okay? You've got it, and, and the actual answer in there is correct, okay? That's all that was asking. This is the change in gravitational potential energy. Let's look at problem 16, and then... We'll... So now let's go the other way. Now I'm going to throw the baseball upward with an initial velocity of 16 meters per second, Okay, so that means it's got a starting kinetic energy is going to equal my final gravitational potential energy, and that is um, and and that is uh, uh, how high will the ball go? So that's how I'm going to solve this. So I'm going to say, okay, well in problem 16, here's what we're doing. We're going to do this. We're going to say, okay, well in problem 16, I throw the ball up with a with this much kinetic energy. All right, and then that kinetic energy is going to dissipate and go to zero. This guy's going to get smaller. This one's going to get smaller. So my kinetic energy is going to be really big at the beginning. Then it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until it goes to zero. All right, but this, but my gravitational potential energy starts at zero because I'm just going to say that the height, I'm going to just set the height at where I let go of the ball, and then it's going to get bigger. And bigger and bigger until the kinetic energy at the beginning is equal to the gravitational potential energy at the end. All right, so those two energies are equal to each other. In the real world, does that happen? No, because in in the real world we've got other things that are that are taking away from this initial kinetic energy. We've got air resistance. We've got friction in the air. We've got the spin of the ball, which is eating up energy. Okay, um, that's why 
when we actually teach this in Physics 210, we'll have sliding blocks instead of roller coasters. Why? Because roller coasters have wheels. And actually, if you're on a frictionless surface sliding, that is, you're going to go faster than if you're on a, a track with wheels that turn without slipping, going down the, at the same angle, with the same mass and everything. Um, oh, wow, I just went into crazy, crazy land there. So sorry about that. So anyway, so we've got one half m v naught squared, which all of these are given. All of these are given. And if you're a novice at this, if if just looking at this thing makes you queasy and lightheaded and you want to throw up and you want to go do anything but this, then go ahead and just put in what the number is. All right, so let's just do it that way. I'm not going to do the, the, the 210 way of, where I go through a bunch of algebra and stuff. Let's just look at, throw up with 16 meters per second. So I'm going to calculate um, what that is. And I'm going to say the baseball is 0.145 kilograms because that's what a baseball ball is from here. Okay. And, well, the mass is canceled anyway. Okay. But what, let's just go ahead and ca calculate this whole thing. So I got 0.5 times 1.45 times 16 squared, and on, I'll do that real quick on my calculator here and let you all see. Oh, I'm not letting you all see it. Okay, so that's what I wrote down. All right, so here we go. And then we've got uh, 0 0.5 times 0.145 times 16 squared. Boom. I get 1856 joules, 18.56. That is equal to the gravitational potential energy, which is going to be mgh. Now, I don't know h. That's the only thing I don't know. So I'm going to multiply m and g together. I get 0.145 times 9.8. That equals 1.421. I'm going to leave that all those numbers there. So I got 1.421 h is equal to 18. 56. Now we can solve that without much trouble, right? I'm going to take the inverse of this guy times 1856. And there we go. My height is 13 meters. Okay. That's how high it went. Cool. So let's turn, let's go ahead and stop recording on this too.